So uh, this is what I want to do. I want to give you guys a uh, little hip mobility, shoulder mobility uh, video for you guys. I don't want to get too scientific about anything like that. It's just something, a tool that I want to provide for uh, our Orange Theory members, our Mind Pump listeners, our fans that are out there that uh, could use this help. Um, the shoulder complex and the hip complex are two of the most common areas where postural deviations stem from. And these are just some moves that can help you guys uh, to keep uh, yourself flexible, moving through full range of motion, uh, alleviate a lot of aches and pains that you might have nagging in your limbs and shoulders and hips and knees uh, that are that are stemmed from these areas. So uh, these are some of my staple movements uh, that I use before I go into any of my exercises, something that uh, when I was in my early 20s, I didn't have to do that I've, now that I've moved into my 30s. Uh, has become something that I have to do before I, I work out. And it makes a world of a difference when you apply this uh, to your workout. It should not take longer than, you know, five to 15 minutes. Um, I highly recommend that you utilize the, the moves that uh, give you the most relief. Uh, different stuff you'll see will be uh, easier for people to, to do. Other ones will be more challenging, more than likely the ones that are more challenging uh, is uh, obvious that you uh, have areas or this is an area that you need to work on. You'll also notice in these videos that I do not have perfect form. I don't have perfect form because I'm uh, messed up myself. I've got a lot of issues that I'm always trying to work on. And when I am not doing these movements, uh, they get worse. And when I'm incorporating them more often, I get a lot better. So those that are, uh, you know, form police and that are going to be watching this video, you know, keep that in mind. I'm fully aware that I have my own postural deviations going on and some of them might be glaring to some of you guys with that professional eye as you go through this. So hopefully you guys enjoy and uh, hopefully this helps you out. The first stretch I have here is a 90-90 stretch. Uh, you'll, the 90-90 represents the, the angle of the knees. You'll see my knees are bent at 90 degrees. Uh, one of the keys that you want to do as you're coming over your knee is you want to puff your chest up. Your trail hand is in the supinated position. That'll help keep me in the neutral spine alignment. And what I'm doing as I'm leaning forward is I'm making sure that that spine stays neutral. I don't want to just hunch over and round the back to get this position. I want to think as if my, my butt was like headlights. And as I'm leaning over the headlights, are I'm trying to point towards the ceiling. That'll help keep that neutral spine. And I'm gonna take it at three different angles. I'm gonna first gonna go towards the knee. Then I'm going to go towards the calf, and then I'm going to go towards the foot. And I'm going to spend about three to five seconds in the stretch, holding the stretch, and then I'm going to passively come in and out of it. So I'm not holding it for a very long time. This is not a static stretch. It's a dynamic movement. So I'm coming in and out of the stretch. I'm going to do that about 10 to 15 times uh, per angle. And you'll, you'll notice me coming in and out of it, keeping the chest elevated and propped up as I do this. Each one of these dynamic movements, we're always doing about 10 to 15 repetitions, uh, never holding the stretch longer than three to five seconds. So the next move I have here, this is a lizard with a rotation. Uh, when you first start off, you want to get in the split stance position. I'm going to drive my knee to open up my growing a bit, and I'm going to point my elbow towards the ground and then open up, rotate towards the sky or the ceiling, looking up as I rotate. Um, this is not something you want to do super fast. It's nice and controlled. Uh, this is going to open up that thoracic region in our back. It's going to open up your shoulders, and uh, you're going to feel a lot in your glutes, your piriformis, uh, hamstring. This is an excellent movement, probably one of my favorites uh, to do when I, when I open up my hips before I squat or do any of my lower body movements. But it also is going to, like I said, open up that thoracic region and shoulder area too. This next movement is a dynamic hip rotation. Very simple and basic cross your ankle over your knee at about 90 degrees. I use the opposite hand to hold my, my foot as I take the other hand and push my knee in and out of the stretch. I don't want to aggressively push on this stretch. I just want to move in and out of it, holding it for about three to five seconds when I feel that stretch. I'm also concentrating on my low back. You can't see that right now, but I'm pushing my low back flat against the ground, keeping that neutral spine, and then I'm moving the knee in and out of the stretch, nice and controlled. Once again, I'm going to do that about 10 to 15 times on each side.
like, oh, this next movement is my dynamic frogger right here. This this exercise or this stretch uh, definitely is a go-to for me, um, and it's difficult. So th this is one of those exercises where someone's watching me, they're like, oh, that form looks a little bit different. Uh, that's because I'm extremely tight. You'll see I don't have a lot of range of motion. But when you get in the frogger position, I'm going to spread my knees out as wide as I can to get that stretch in my growing area. Notice my back feet. I have the heels flat on the ground. That's why it's called the frogger position. And then you'll see me move in and out of the stretch. So I rock forward coming out of it, and then I slowly rock back into it. And when you rock back into it, that's when you're going to feel that deep stretch. I want to keep my chest down if I can as I come in and out. And it's just, a, for me, it's a very small range of motion. Each time I come into that stretch, I'm trying to sink a little bit deeper into the stretch, holding it for about three to five seconds. This is definitely uh, one of the more advanced movements are the ones we do, uh, but extremely beneficial. This next movement right here is real simple. Uh, it's a leg swing. Uh, we get a lot of our abductors and adductors incorporated here. Even some of your glutes and piriformis gets activated. Um, and all I'm doing is I'm, I'm dynamically swinging the legs in a controlled manner. Uh, in front of my body, back and forth uh, in your sagittal plane, or excuse me, in the frontal plane. This next movement is a dynamic toe touch. Real basic, simple movement for your hamstrings. Uh, one thing though I want to point out while doing this, uh, you want to come all the way back up to neutral even retract the shoulders. Uh, anytime we're doing dynamic exercise, that's one of the great things about a dynamic stretch versus a, a standard static stretch, is that there's movement involved. We're always uh, focusing on your posture and everything that's going on. So this, from the side view, you can see a better example of how I pull the shoulder blades back every time I come up and move through the stretch dynamically. Each time I kick the leg out, I'm only holding that stretch for a couple seconds and then returning back to that position. Now I want to move into the shoulder complex. This first exercise is a shoulder dislocate with a stick. You start with a nice wide grip on the hands, you're going to rotate over and back. Now the wider you are, the easier this movement is going to be. The closer you bring your hands in, the more challenging. So you start off with a really wide grip as you're rotating back and forth. You're trying to keep the arms nice and straight. You don't want to have any bend in the elbows. Uh, you know your hands are too close together if you start to go over and back and you feel a bend in the elbow. Uh, but as you continue to progress your mobility, you'll actually be able to bring those hands in closer and still remain with a straight arm. This next movement this is a movement that actually was taught to me from Justin. Um, it's also been derived from a yoga, a yoga stretch. It's called threading the needle. Uh, one of my favorite shoulder mobilities. And one of the things you want to do is you're just pulling the arm all the way through. Notice my hand is flat on the ground as I come through. A lot of people have a tendency, it feels more comfortable or easier for you to allow your hand to be in a neutral position or a supinated position, but you want to pronate it, put the hand down, and then I dip the shoulder in. This is going to help open up that thoracic region in my back, also all of my shoulder. Excellent move for your shoulders. Here you have Justin pointing out the trigger points on my body uh, for my scapula. You got three major points that uh, we're going to focus on, and we're going to use a lacrosse ball where we're going to put the, the ball right on one of those points that he just, he just mentioned or pointed out. And then you're going to see a 45-degree bend in my knees. And then before I start to move this my arm through rotation, I'm going to concentrate on everything being flat. My low back, my lumbar, I want to push down against the ground before I start to move my arm above my head. And notice this is another exercise that shows how much uh, of an issue I have here. Some people have great flexibility and will be able to bring their arm all the way to the ground. It's very challenging for me because I do not have the best shoulder mobility. And this is something that I have to work on constantly. And I'm just gonna rotate the hands up over my head, uh, the shoulder up, up, and then I'm going to hold that stretch for about three to five seconds, then move out of it while I'm continuing to think about pressing my low back flat. I'm going to find the next trigger point. I'm going to move the lacrosse ball a little bit higher up on my shoulder and focus on the next trigger point. Same thing again. I'm, move, I'm going to do this anywhere from about 10 to 15 repetitions, holding that stretch for three to five seconds as I move in and out of it. And you'll see each point, you might have better range of motion than others, um, but all of them are trigger points to help 
with the mobility of your shoulder right here. This next one, uh, I just call it like a shoulder circles lying flat on a bench. Um, you can do this on a stability ball or a bench, uh, but you definitely want to be elevated so you can the, you let the weight of your arms just naturally drop the arms and fall back. This is another one we can see a glaring uh, imbalance on my body. Notice on my, my left side, it's a lot tighter than my right side. Naturally, the weight of my arms uh, drop back and they're, they're, you can see after watching this video, um, that I definitely need more work on the left side than my right side. So these are things that uh, we're always looking for as trainers and even myself with all the knowledge and experience I have, I still have areas where I always need to be working on. And it's a very simple, easy movement right here. Just like the last one, I'm concentrating on pushing my low back flat and I'm just taking these through big, large circles, keeping my arms nice and straight. Uh, and you can take them back in a reverse and forward motion. And I'm gonna get about 10 to 15 of these big, wide circles. So if you want something really to point out uh, the lack of mobility that someone has, this this is a great assessment right here. It's a wall press. Notice that I that's about as far as I can get up. You know, ideally I want to be able to come all the way up and bring my hands together. A lot of times I will do this movement first to see how how flexible somebody is uh, in their shoulders. And in this case, I don't have very much whatsoever. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to keep my butt, my upper back, my hands and my elbows against the wall the entire time. As you press over your head, you'll see the body will start to uh, move and deviate from the wall in order to do that. So it's, it's something you have to fight. You have to fight the back, the butt, and the shoulders and hands against the wall as you try and press up. And if we have great flexibility, shoulder mobility, we'll be able to bring our hands all the way together. Uh, and I'm just going to go up into the, into the stretch. I'm going to hold it once again, three to five seconds, then come back out of it and then move in and out of it for about five to 10 seconds passively. This last movement are, are wall circles, uh, something that I know that Dr. Spinet is uh, notorious for doing. It's also a great movement that uh, Justin and myself have incorporated. Uh, it's also very challenging for me. What you want to do is you want to keep yourself with good posture and as close to the wall as you possibly can. I have to stand a, a few inches away from it because I don't, once again, have great shoulder mobility. And all I'm trying to do is create these giant circles. Notice my hand first starts in the supinated position and then as I come over the top of my head, I rotate into the pronated position, then rotate back to the supinated position as it, as it comes closer to my hips. So you're just rotating the wrist over when you get at 12 o'clock, and then when you get all the way down at six o'clock, you get back to the point where your your hand and palm is facing yourself, and you just went in slow circles, trying to keep uh, neutral spine alignment and your posture straight the entire time. So notice I dip back a little bit in this, and this is just because, like I said, I do not have great shoulder mobility. It's something that I need to work on.